In the 17th century, Kings Lynn, on the banks of the Great Ouse, was a busy port. Alongside the local fisheries, many goods were not only being shipped abroad, but also, in a time of poor land transport, up and down the east coast of England. Grain was the main export, whilst imports of wine from France, Spain and Portugal were supplemented by coal from the northeast of England. But these southern quays have now given way to more modern facilities further north of the town. And here, braving the harsh December weather on Perfleet Quay, is none other than Captain George Vancouver, a naval officer and explorer from Kings Lynn, after whom the city of Vancouver in Canada is named. The marketplace is dominated by the old corn exchange and, as you'd expect, is also bounded by a number of hotels and hostelries, where no doubt I can find some lunch. With lunch secured, I now need to walk a little to the east, where you will find Kings Lynn's lovely little terminus station. The original 1840 station was replaced by this one, which was completed in 1872. The unusual decoration is a result of restoration work completed in 2014, where the aim was to return the station to a state reminiscent of 1949 in the early days of British Railways. The quaint booking and waiting hall is framed by the station buffet, which dates from 1910. And everywhere you look, the original BR logo is used, even on a really modern ticket machine. However, it's now clear that this once busy terminus and exchange now has effectively just one operational platform. Right, now it's time to hop on board our Great Northern Class 387 for the ride into London. Welcome to Kings Lynn. Kings Lynn, a very interesting and ancient old town, and it's got its own little port and everything. So, uh, no doubt, voiceover man is either showing you some pictures or has already shown you some pictures. Yeah, excellent uh, little place. Spent a lovely two or three hours here, wandering around in the very, very cold and wet, it has to be said. As I just got in from the Netherlands this morning on the Stenner, I thought, you know, I should really carry on with that flat topography and so that's why with my interrail ticket I had a little bit of time left over so I thought well I'll come up to Kings Lynn have a look at the place and also then we can try the northern the great northern trains that run between here and Kings Cross and see how they go it's not great for first class anyway is it just looks like second class with a sticker on the window that says first anyway Let's have a look at some flat landscape. Well, yes, you would really struggle to tell the difference between first and second class on this train. But here in first class, you do get a full-size table, some power supplies, and the ironing board seats do have armrests. The priority seating seems to have a P, and beyond the doors are two more banks of four seats at a table. Well, let's step through into second class to find... It's exactly the same. Well, the airline ones do have drop-down tables and the banks of four, they still got that full-size table. Of course, as we cross back into first class, the sharp-eyed viewers amongst you will, I'm sure, be aware that the cachet of first class is exemplified by having a vertical maquette, affording a truly luxurious alternative to the dowdy horizontal one in second class. And as for our route, well, our service will start life as a stopping train, as it calls at the Fenland stations of Watlington, Downham Market and Littleport, before a stop at the Cathedral City of Ely. From there, there's two more stops at Waterbeach and Cambridge North, before we finally run into Cambridge. And at Cambridge, we assume a new persona as the fast, non-stop Cambridge to London service, as we cut across to join the East Coast Main Line at Hitchin, and then go onwards to London King's Cross. And so our split personality train will cover the 159 kilometres, or 99 miles, in 1 hour and 50 minutes, giving an average speed of 87 kilometres per hour, or 54 miles per hour. As we leave the station, there's still a little goods line snaking left, which is the shunting head for the remains of the old main line to Deerham. Here, the freight-only line runs down to Sibelco's silica plant. 
But it isn't long before we're pushing on through the flat Fenlands of Norfolk. And Watlington is a success story. Closed in 1968 as part of the beaching cuts, local efforts got the station reopened again in 1975. At Stowbridge, a lineside property has a coach from an old pacer unit in the garden. Very bizarre. And the oddities continue at Downham Market where the station, dating from 1846, still retains the Network South East colours and signage. Network South East ceased operations in 1994 and the station was redecorated in 2017 to mimic how it may have looked in the 1980s. Crossing over the Great Ouse highlights just how low-lying the fens are, the water level being higher than the surrounding farmland. Littleport is our first stop in Cambridgeshire and it is a cute little station. Beyond Littleport the line tracks the Great Ouse although the water is quite hard to see behind the high dikes. Ely North Junction marks the point where our line crosses the east-west line that runs between Peterborough and Norwich. Ely West Curve allows freight services to continue through without the need for a reversal at Ely Station. Are there still passenger trains that use the curve? The approach to Ely Station is undoubtedly the prettiest part of the run, as we get a lovely view of the marina with the cathedral standing behind. Ely Station itself is pretty busy, with three platforms which are all signalled for two-way running as so many of the east-west trains reverse here. And Ely Dock Junction marks another line served by the station, this one going through to Bury St Edmunds, but our sights are now set firmly on Cambridge. At Waterbeach, the line begins to track the River Cam into Cambridge. Cambridge North was developed to service the growing suburbs, along with the commercial and high-tech facilities around the Science Park. Welcome aboard this service to London. As we approach Cambridge Station itself, there are extensive carriage sidings, which reflect the large numbers of services that both originate and terminate at Cambridge. We are scheduled to rest at the platform for about six minutes before we start on the final dash to London. We have completed the first 66 kilometres in around an hour. The next 93 kilometres will take just 51 minutes. There is so much high-tech development at Cambridge that another station is being built to serve the needs of these new facilities to the south. And just beyond that, the line for Stansted Airport and London Liverpool Street will carry on directly south. But we have to head off southwesterly in order to meet the East Coast main line at Hitchin. Without the encumbrance of intermediate stops, Foxton, Shepreth and Royston all pass by quickly as we race to the East Coast Main Line.
And finally, we are over Cambridge Junction, just north of Hitchin, and we are onto the East Coast Main Line. So, as we cruise through Hertfordshire, a little bit more about our train. Our train is a Class 387-1 electric multiple unit from Bombardier's Electrostar family. They were initially delivered to Thameslink in around 2014, but from 2016 they have run these Great Northern services to Kings Lynn. They've got a top speed of 110 miles per hour, so they should be able to hold their own on the fast line. And, apart from the pointless first-class seats, it has been good ride quality throughout, and I think the good people of Kings Lynn have a pretty decent service from these trains. And as we pass some landmarks on the approach to London, let's talk price. As I was saying earlier, I was riding on an interrail ticket today, but having a look, there doesn't seem to be a lot of chance to get advance tickets on this route. So singles could run to £65.10 in first class and £40.60 in standard. And obviously on this particular train, you would be insane to give them the extra £25 for this first class that isn't really a first class product at all. And we enter the platforms at King's Cross spot on time. At all times. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this little run through the flatlands of the East Anglian Fens with Great Northern. If you have, then do check out some other trips on the channel as there's now over 100 to choose from. And if you've not yet seen how I travelled through the flatlands of Flevoland in the Netherlands, then just click here.